I can just answer right now. So I don't think it's probably theoretically possible, but it will require some, it's not possible out of the box to use Simba with the uh, byte or a bit right now. I think it's kind of using its own bundler, which is sort of a competitor to, to it. Uh, although I know it doesn't support all the same things like uh, glob imports and a few other nice, nice things. Um, but it, it should be possible, but the main challenge is probably how to integrate styles in a nice way. Um, I haven't really used the bit myself and only tested it briefly a long time ago. Um, I see. But yeah, Do, have you used it a lot or? Um, well, the reason I'm asking is because I'm a full stack Rails developer. And uh, for Rails, you have a gem called Webpacker, which is basically the official way to do front end development. But uh, it has it's it has uh, its performance problems with bigger apps. Let's say it that way. And uh, someone recently created a newbie gem called Vite Ruby, which basically integrates Vite.js into Ruby in a really nice and performant way. And, oh, cool. Um, I, I was wondering whether it's possible to someone make them work with that for to gain the performance advantage. And I also looked into integrating Imba just straight into its own Ruby gem, but wrapping all of that would take a considerable amount of work. So yeah, yeah. that's where the question stems from. Yeah. Uh, did you write that down, uh, Alexander? I might look into the... I can post it here. Uh, you mean the Ruby gem you mentioned? No, I didn't yeah. write that down. Yeah, I can I can set a link. Yeah, I, I added a link now, so okay. it will be interesting to look into because it's if it's very simple. I haven't used Rails in ages, so I'm not sure how the JavaScript pipeline works for assets and stuff. Uh, I'm I think it sh probably shouldn't be that difficult to create an Imba plugin as well, like an Imba gem for the rails as a pipeline but again since i haven't used it in a long time i i, I can't promise anything because i'm not i'm not sure but oh yeah no 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 worries i understand yeah. completely i was just curious uh basically white under under the hood also uses roll up so uh... yeah i think white it's really interesting i think white started using roll up as their main thing and now they're using es build they're using roll up for still using roll for the packaging but i think they're using uh es build for the uh uh transpiling for es6 to es5 and all that stuff i think i think es build is a pretty big part of right now uh, and it wasn't originally but uh yeah I uh, yeah anyone else have any questions or things they would like to talk about on the agenda because we don't have a we don't I had have a thought. A, yeah um somebody mentioned this and it might help for the uh, kind of with the previous question which is like exporting a web component because we know imba generates web components but i don't think there's really like an easy way to build one and then kind of get it out of imba and just use it somewhere and I wonder if that's just a limitation of like the build process, if there needs to be like a method for doing that specifically. But when you're trying to use Imba in kind of unfamiliar environments, like a Rails app or something, if, if the story was you can just export a web component and that can be used anywhere, you can use a web component, which is basically anywhere, then maybe um, there's at least some kind of escape hatch for those sorts of situations. Yeah, that's true. I think there are you can theoretically now use use it as so you're talking about essentially registering uh, a real web component and then using it by actually creating instances using document create element or by uh, hydrating elements from the from some existing HTML document. Well, I guess I don't really know enough about web components to answer that, but I just have the sense that that there is some way to be like here I have a web component in this file and then I can use it, but I don't know how to like go from like my Imba project to here's something that's just a web component. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Especially like I have a sense that if I hacked around on Imba, I could like compile my files into web components that I could use somewhere. But I feel like yeah. I would be doing a lot of hacking to try and figure it out. Yeah. So I guess one of the first things to simplify the whole setup would be to allow the build process to build the styles in line in the JavaScript. So instead of mm. add, adding a, a separate style sheet, you you would do like we did with the Imba C compiler previously, that you actually, uh, the styles are added inside of the JavaScript. And so when mm. the JavaScript file runs, it actually injects the styles uh, from right. that uh, JavaScript. If you did that, it should definitely be possible to create just a file that has, let's say, defined a few web components. And if you include that file in any HTML document, uh, all the HTML elements, with the same name as the web components that you have designed, the defined will be awakened. But then there's mm. always a question about hydration and stuff. Like, what does it mean if you have a, let's say it's an app dashed clock, and if you have uh, HTML inside of that as well from before, like from your Rails app or whatever, how do you mm. want to treat that when the web component wakes up? Or do you expect just the web component itself to do all its internal rendering? Um, right, but it is yeah, it is possible. I think it 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 would make sense to make a better uh, build command, maybe just for that. Uh, yeah, it sounds like there'd be some some things to figure out, but but potentially that could be a useful thing. Yeah, and also somebody was asking uh, about it on on Discord the other day. That's why it came to mind. Yeah, I've also seen a lot of people ask about just building stuff for static sites. That seems right. like a pretty big important thing. To even if the configuration theoretically supports that now it's still not documented and i haven't uh, taken the time to sit down and actually write documentation showing how to do that so mm -hmm. i think we should have predefined examples on how to uh, build and deploy to github pages and to heroku and to a few different of these uh, static hosts i guess yeah and that, that's a that's a use case that i'm doing as well and i'm using yeah. like some custom build script that goes yeah. in and uses like regular <laughs> expressions to modify all the files <laughs> Yeah, but I think I think you've added something easier that I haven't I haven't explored yet. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Anything else? Like any other questions now? Yeah, I quickly wanted to check in on the examples on Imba.io. Um, yeah. I I love those examples and, and seeing the expression on people's faces when I start dragging like the, the windows around and, and telling them that look it's it's real it's right there it's like you can use it right away um, yeah. but some of the some of the examples have like small things that are broken or things that uh, for me at least and, and Firefox I haven't tested extensively in other browsers um, may be like partially broken uh, so I wanted to quickly check in um, is are there any plans to like refresh or update the examples? Because I uh, took a quick look just to get more familiar with Imba code and, and started fixing some of them, but I didn't want to step on other people's work if that was in process. So we're definitely open for any sort of pull request. I, I to be honest, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. I opened it in Firefox now for the first time in some time. It looks like some of the examples are not even working at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so. or that is they are rendering but the clocks are just not doing anything i think some of them have intermittent issues and some i think the circle drawer is is always broken but i think that may be broken in in chrome as well um the others i've seen that sometimes I haven't been able to figure out what it is that happens, but something seems to get a bit stuck with, uh, yeah, something gets stuck and then some of the examples just stop working from then on until you refresh the page. So I haven't figured out what that is, but the, um, uh, the fixes I was thinking about were were a bit smaller than that. But if, if nothing else is planned, I would probably just do a general pass on all of the examples once I get started with it. Yeah, I think it looks like there are quite a few problems with the service worker, which I know that we also had trouble with on Scrimba. Like Firefox has some weird challenges with uh, uh, service workers that are not there in other browsers. 
Uh, but there seems to be other problems as well. And I'm very eager to get some pull requests for that. I'm not sure if it was you or someone else who actually pointed out one of the problems in the clocks example and actually made that work. I uh, cannot claim any, <laughs> any, any pull requests yeah, for, uh, for Inbio so far. It was actually, uh, yeah. So it looks like I, I got the, uh, it looks like, yeah, I like Firefox has some problem with rotation values that are way too large. So if you, uh, the way we calculate the rotations on the clocks. Um, oh, right. Yeah. I remember this. I, when we were up. Yeah. I've run into issues with uh, transforms that are like very strict standard in, in Firefox. Uh, yeah. And then every, everyone else is like, no, it's fine. You just do it regular. But Firefox yeah. is like, no, this is going to break hard. But, uh, but the, uh, the paint example works, right? In your Firefox for you or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was, m most of them work. I think it's the circle one that doesn't work. And then I've had a few situations, not not recently. It was a couple of weeks ago. Maybe when you talk ago. about the circle one, what, what do you mean with the circle one? Uh, let me let me just the clocks or uh, let's see, circle drawer. The last one from the seven GUIs one. Oh, you're the talking about those one. examples. Ah, I I was just looking yeah. at the examples on the front page. Uh, no, uh, no, I actually meant the the. the yeah, I haven't even watched. Or... It's actually uh, I didn't implement those, so I haven't even tested them. I can pull uh, them up here. Which yeah. example? Sure. Uh, Is it in the, the docs somewhere? Bottom. Sorry, could you repeat that? It, it's if you just click on try, then it's try. just a example listed in the menu of the seven. Oh right. Uh, uh, that's again, that's I haven't really. <clears throat> Uh, at, at the complete bottom, the circle drawer one is the one that I that has been the most consistently broken for me. Yeah, exactly it's, the same for me. And it's Seems probably broken in Chrome as well. Yeah, I, well, it's just broken overall. It actually works in Chrome. I just tested it. Okay, doesn't look like. I see there are some other glitches as well with the scroll bar that goes to nowhere and. Um, it would be fun to try to fix this, uh, but maybe we should. I'll just well, look I, at it. I was, gonna do, I was just going to do a, a general pass and kind of fix some of the low hanging fruits there. I think if there, there are some bigger things, I may get stuck, but at least whatever progress yeah. I make, I can just share in the chat and then we can uh, see. But it, the main thing was to just clarify that I didn't step on any toes with other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't uh, don't think about that. That's seven tasks. Uh, I just want to see what the circle thing actually is. Okay. So if you want to take a shot at the at the circle drawer, that would be cool. If not, I could also try at some point, but it's. Uh, uh, you could try to just reading up on the, since it doesn't work now, you could try to uh, read up on the seven GUIs spec and essentially just implement it from, from scratch. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually never took the time to really look into what seven GUIs was. I was yeah. Like, I, I, I'm yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually a good idea. It's the examples look kind of, random and plain but i think it's a cool i think we copied it from svelte because they have it in their documentation or in their examples but it's a cool uh, cool concept where each example actually has like a very thought through reason for being there uh, showing various uh, challenges that you usually run into with these or those sort of uh, ui frameworks nice. there's also oh. still one missing yeah, I, I saw that as well. And that's the, probably the most, isn't that the CRUD? No, it's not the CRUD. The cells. Cells. Like a whole spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but it would be cool to have that as well. <laughs> it's a time sink, though. <laughs> is yeah, yeah. But is it uh, does uh, Swell have it? <laughs> uh, no, they don't. they don't. Okay. I think the circle jar also is supposed to have some undo and redo and uh, yeah. diameter so adjustment same. features. Yeah, I see that. If you look at the actual Svelte example, it's much. Uh, it's actually working and and uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. if you uh, if you want to try that, Matthias, that would be really cool. And uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if it doesn't work, then I can step on your toes instead and try to <laughs> implement the <laughs> working cool. version of it. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'll um, I, I have some plans to dig deeper into Imba this week, and I, I have a little side project that I'm hacking on, so it makes sense to combine it. So I'll, I'll do one pass, just doing kind of smaller, simpler fixes uh, where I noticed a couple of I've noticed yeah. a couple of small things, and then I'll take a stab at the uh, circles. Cool, do that. So I was supposed to release a new version of Imba and the tooling last week, but I postponed it. Uh, I hope to do it this week, but I've been very uh, in in the flow in uh, uh, porting Scrimba, the core Scrimba tech over to Imba 2, which has been really nice. Uh, it's so much cleaner than the Imba 1 code base with the styles being directly inside there and using the, just using inline styles and also the custom events for resize observers and intersection observers has saved so much logic from the, has removed a ton of code from the previous uh, implementation that was in Imba 1. So it's really cool. It's a good test. And I've also run into a bunch of issues both with the uh, tooling and with the language as well that I'm fixing uh, as I go and will release uh, release an update again, hopefully this week later. Um, nice. Yeah. Other than that, I thought I briefly mentioned it to Nathan earlier that we could try to discuss uh, styles a little bit like importing and exporting styles uh, because Nathan has talked about that previously and we actually had uh, uh, support for that previously using mixins. I think the support is theoretically still there but it's very uh, both hidden and not really supposed to to stay for version two. Uh, maybe I should share my screen or so have you thought anything Thing about what you would actually want, Nathan. Like, what are the challenges that you would want to solve with uh, being able to to uh, reference styles and pass them around? Yeah, um, I guess I don't have like specific examples off the top of my head, but I could come up with some. It's mainly kind of comparing to React, where styles are often handled as just plain objects that are converted into styles. Yeah. And so you can then manipulate them like you would any other plain object and pass them around really easily. Oftentimes you might define a bunch of variables for different things that you're going to use in your styles, like heights and widths of things, especially if you're trying to position things relative to other things. And you can just do all those calculations and then throw the values into an object at the end, which, well, you can do an Imba. And especially now that you can put the CSS within the self tag and interpolate within that, it makes it a lot better. Yeah. But I think when you start trying to pass values into components and then um, potentially pass like partial styles that then get modified within the child component, um, when those are just plain objects, you have total freedom to do that or to generate styles from a um, from a function or you know call a method that that returns back an object. Yeah, um, it probably would be better if I could think of like very specific examples of those cases, but um, those are the types of things I found myself doing in React that uh, I've missed a little bit in Imba. Yeah, I've also I I've experienced some, especially when when uh, porting the the Scrimba core. I've also experienced some similar challenges. Not exactly that I want to be able to modify styles and do all sorts of dynamic things with them because. So styles in Imba, one of the core ideas of styles in Imba is that they are actually compiled to uh, static style sheets. So they're not right. really doing anything in line. You're only setting 
CSS variables in line if you have placeholders and interpolated, uh, in, interpolated values. Uh, but all of the actual style rules are created as CSS, static CSS as import and imported into, uh, into the document as a style sheet. So that's right. much better for performance in, in most cases. Yeah, uh, it is a good trade-off. Yeah. But again, I have missed some things. Like I would often, it feels kind of clumsy if I want to style, if you have, you can see, see the screen now, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say we have some stuff inside of this app item, like that renders stuff uh, inside of it. Then doing the whole CSS, like deep selectors to, to style things uh, inside of the app item feels clumsy. And I would often, it would be cool if I could somewhere, let's say I have like a const uh, button, CSS, blah, 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 BG, uh, blue for, and then, and then uh, icon size 12 pixels. Let's say you have this and you have like other parts of the styles, BG, blue, five, whatever. It would, it could be cool if this essentially like it creates a static style uh, or a selector with some sub selectors and the value of button now would then be a unique class name that represents that style and mm. that style tree. And then yeah. you could easily like set that as a style wherever you want. And this item would then inherit this style and including the sub styles of that mm. thing. That's definitely, that's the way CSS mix-ins worked previously. And as I said, they might even work that way now. I think the syntax was something like export CSS mix-in, like you had a, a percentage sign to, to specify the name of the mix-in and you import them the same way, like import mix-in from styles. And then you would, just add the mixins this way, I think. Uh, but the, I think it might as well just be used uh, as variables directly. I think that's probably nice enough. But another problem or another thing I, I found to be a challenge was that, uh, especially in Scrimba, we have the site and then we have the uh, editor. And I would like the editor itself resides in a separate directory with a few different subdirectories and a bunch of different uh, elements. It would, it would be really nice to be able to, to have, if I do a style in a file, like you all know, if I do CSS button and size 20, it will apply this style to all button elements in this file. But I would really like to be able to apply to create styles like this that maybe apply to all files, like all elements in files inside of a directory plus the subdirectories, or maybe be able to at least import those styles here into other files as well. Do you understand? Yeah, importing what them I'm seems sure? a lot safer, yeah. Yeah, importing them seems safer, but again, it would be uh, practical to be able to like say that everything inside of these these groups of components, I want to style certain things a certain way. Because uh, an, another way to think about that is like, you know, in a component-based framework that maybe you should have a button component that has its own styles uh, to solve for that type of case. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I guess it's maybe more about, especially like you have CSS resets. I see now in the current Scrimba site after some style re style changes, in the site, you probably you suddenly have like buttons that are all messed up inside of the editor because we have some general styles like styling uh, everything with a class name button to have right. a large text and some padding or something. So I, I just thought it would be nice to be able to more kind of uh, be stricter about scoping these generic styles because often you might have relatively generic styles that you don't want to have apply everywhere, but you do want to apply them to uh, more than one file. That's essentially the use case I'm, I'm talking about. And I'm not sure how to, I agree that it would be way too magical if it's just suddenly without a keyword or anything scoped to all the files in a certain directory, but I would, uh, 
yeah, I haven't find, found a good a good uh, proposal for how to how to do the the thing I, I want. But it's not like a huge. Uh, I don't miss it that much. I yeah, it's not too difficult to work around it, but it's a little bit uh, challenging. So importing. How about you know, introducing I, a new keyword? Like if you look at line number one, you have global CSS, right? You could yeah. have like a dir directory and then CSS. Yeah, but it's, I, I agree, but it's, it feels kind of hacky. So if, if we talk about the other idea, what if we, so Nathan, what would you expect if you did like export CSS and then you had like button hair, P, uh, FF sans uh, LG blah, blah blah. You have a bunch of different styles now. The, the syntax is not highlighted incorrectly. But if right now in Imba, if we import like somewhere import styles here, the only thing that does is that it includes these styles, which will use usually be go be global. Import those somewhere in the whole style sheet like in the same order as thing as things have been imported. So there's mm -hmm. no way now to say that, oh, I have all these styles here for certain elements and I want to import those styles and apply them to any element, any literal oh, right. tag element inside of this file. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what it comes down to, right? Like if you could import into a, into a variable, that file or that CSS, you know, like uh, import, my styles from dot slash styles and then create a CSS declaration where you could say global CSS styles or you could put it onto a tag and have local CSS. But the fact that it's a variable means you could move it, you could put it where you want it or potentially even pass that into children of components. Yeah, so maybe the, the, the challenge then is that uh, if you want to be able to import it and then reference the styles from another style sheet, essentially like mixins in Tailwind or mixins in less than SAS, then you start going, uh, then it starts become, to become much more difficult to, to statically create the styles. Um, right. Which, yeah, and I think, I mean, this, this whole thing seems like it's easy to get carried away with something that's, that's like not good, you know? Um, and I found that as I got more used to Imba, this this does this limitation doesn't trip me up as much. Although when yeah. I tried to make really like generic kind of component libraries or something with like buttons that I can maybe override and customize and stuff, I do find it um, difficult to do. And yeah. uh, this may be part of the reason for that, but that's also something we could explore specifically is like how to what features would allow for more kind of like generic um components that can be composed or overridden yeah. or themed or whatever because there may be other strategies that that would allow for some of the th reasons why you would want these types of css features as i guess if if you're going to if you use inline styles it's very difficult to let's say you have a custom component like a button or a nathan button which yeah. is a generic component that does a bunch of stuff if you want to uh, style that and be able to override those styles, I guess the safest way would essentially be to do global CSS Nathan button and do all the styles for it here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And then if you want to override something, like you import that button somewhere else in your app. Um, and then you could, if you only want to change or override some styles from, so I could actually change as a file line, like button in bar. Uh, so if we have it here, so I import, uh, what, sorry, import uh, button and I use it here. So Nathan button. So if I want to override some styles, I could then do uh, either, which is really clunky. I could do the scope styles, like or set styles for that button inside of there. We can come back to the CSS. Uh, in self later this meeting because I'm, I I want to ask you guys about whether you think it should be inside of the elements or uh, on the line before because I've been uh, tripped up by that myself. Mm. Um, what? 
Before, before? Sorry, I wanted to ask, what if you redeclare the button now? Basically, what if you now make a new tag within this file and then uh, if you the tag? Yeah, if you make a new tag now, it will throw an error because you can't compile uh, the same, where you can't define two web components with the exact same name. But you could you... here, but here you could do just CSS Nathan button and you're free to do all sorts of styling for that button. Um, but then oh, that again, works. Yeah, that works. But so that's the weird Oh, that's just the selector, right? Yeah, it's just the selector. Uh, and since this is defined after the selector in button, it should uh, inside of here, it should actually work, like override these things just for this file. But there are some weird issues with that as well. I guess maybe what you would rather want is to, if you have a style component library like that, where you have buttons and all sorts of different things, then you could define your own style sheet where you do global CSS, blah, 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 and you override the styles of certain styles of these components. So that could work. Uh, what, what I think is nice, you know, in sort of the React way of doing it is, is that you're kind of forced to make a, a prop that is like, you know, additional styles or something like that, or maybe even multiple props for different styles for different parts of the component. And then you can pass yeah. in your own styles for those specific things. Because when you create like a style sheet that just arbitrarily styles different parts of the component, you kind of lose the guarantee that the component is, you know, like um, going to respond in a, in a predictable way, you know, because it's like, you're not, you're not passing props to it or arguments to it. You're just kind of like willy nilly styling whatever parts of it you like from the outside. Yeah, but what is the Nathan we... the Nathan button could define that like oh this this little portion of the button maybe it's like an icon or something. Yeah. You can you can provide override styles to that specifically or something. But maybe what if you had like more inside of here the Nathan button. Let's say you had some CSS and you actually have like uh, icon with 10 pixels uh icon hover bg I'm not sure the purple too. Uh if you define these and then actually use them inside of this tag tree, then you can obviously override that for specific yeah. components this way. Uh, if you had auto completions and actually tooling that took care of seeing oh, what that's cool. CSS variables were defined inside of a tag and then auto complete and show them when you actually set inline styles for the buttons. But then yeah. again, the, the problem then would be that you would maybe want to to create these as more of an object and then pass them into multiple buttons, I guess. Yeah, true. Somehow. That's a cool technique though, that you just put there. Um, but, and you could do the same thing by, by having an icon with property that you pass in as an attribute and then that's yes. um, interpolated into the child, which is probably how I would do it today. Yeah. Uh... If you wanted, you know, if you wanted to keep it sort of like a yeah. Kind of a strong like API between those. Yeah. Hi, I'm kind of new here. I'm JD. I wonder if I can make a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea. I like the idea of a hierarchical CSS that applies to everything in, in a subfolder and all of it in a folder and all its subfolders. So uh, the Apache web server has this notion of an HT access file where it'll look in the current directory for the .ht access and then in the parent directory it'll go up until it finds one. Yeah. How, how ugly would it be to have a magical file like local styles.imba that the compiler would look for in the current folder and then the parent folder and then the one about that? Maybe look at all of them and, you know, cascade them all together. Yeah. I think that's, it's relatively easy uh, from an implementation standpoint. Uh, the only downside is that we would add a few more obscure class names to all the elements. We already add two or three uh, weird class names to the elements. If you look in the uh, generated HTML of Imba files, uh, we could remove most of them in production, I guess, if you don't utilize the functions of uh, directory scoped styles. Would it be enough to have like directory scope where you always do in a full directory and its subdirectories, or is it more of like, just one directory or what yeah, I don't really, granularity I don't really would you want? I haven't thought it out that much. 
Have you any idea how the HA access works? I guess that it's is with subdirectories, isn't it? It just looks for the closest HA access. Yeah, it looks for the closest one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe that's the right thing. Just you know, go up the class arc until you find one. But it seems like with style sheets, you really want it to get everything from all the the whole folder hierarchy. Yeah. I'm um, a little bit concerned that if you would have this hierarchy that imports all these styles from the parent folders that once you're in the browser and you have a broken style, it will be really hard to track down where it's coming from since there are a lot of potential files where it could be the rule complete could be implemented. Yeah, that's true. And I, that being said, though, I think from I haven't even started looking at the actual web inspector tooling, but there are so many nice things we can do there as well to ease the debugging. Like we could uh, add uh, an extension to Chrome or the Firefox dev tools where you can actually map the CSS to the uh, source, like the, the styling sources in Inba, so that you can jump to whatever you see a font style 10 pixels, font size 10 pixels, you could actually click there and jump to the file and the place where that specific style property has most defined in Inba. Um, I think things like that would help for the debugging, uh, but yeah. sure, the more places, so the beauty of inline styles and just keeping styles very strictly in single files and even right beside the components themselves is exactly that you don't get these problems where we have a bunch of different styles fighting uh, with uh, specificity, specificity and trying to override each other. That's one of the things I found really um, easy with Tailwind and with styles in Imba too. So we need to make sure that we don't go the other way again, where we end up with all these messy different style sheets. And, yeah, and I agree with that. I, I really like putting styles very close to where they're used. But there's yeah. a trade-off, right? If, if you want to make yeah. one change that affects a whole bunch of places in the code, you know, there are times when that's, you know, valuable as well. Yeah. 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 And I, I think also though, like when you're, when you're, when you're using a component based system, you can solve that a lot of times by putting those styles into a component that gets reused, but then the styles are close to where it's used within the component. Of course it doesn't always work, but the the more global the styles the more the more dangerous oftentimes yeah and usually global styles can also be solved by having dedicated files which are only having styles and which need to be imported explicitly so when i then have this bark in a button component for example and i see at the top of the button component oh i'm importing the global style file here then i can look into that file to find the bug there instead of having to go through all the parent folders to find where the style was defined. Yeah. Also, if you just happen to reorganize your components, they, their styling would all change. Yeah. What about the HTML kind of equivalent of this? Like an, another thing in React is that you can generate HTML from a function or JSX, let's say. And um, oftentimes people will put like methods on their um, React component that generate bits of HTML that are then used within the template. Um, I tried to do that in Imba once and it didn't quite work. You know, like if, if you wanted to, um, instead of creating additional tags to, to, yeah. to simplify your HTML, you can break them up into methods on the, on the tag itself. Yeah, are you talking about uh, actually uh, HTML or are you talking about mere, oh, more like you do def body and then you do subtrees? Yeah, something is like that. that. Is, and then is in... that what you're talking about? Or because if you want to generate actual plain HTML, then it's as easy as doing that from wherever and then setting the HTML. Uh, uh, but I guess at that at that point, I want to I want to put like the content of one of these tags to be a call to body. So yeah, like so under self, yeah. Th there's a really subtle bug. That's not really a bug, but it's a it's a feature that I haven't explained well enough, and that uh, we probably need to change before the final version two. And this should work perfectly well if you do uh, blah blah, and then you do body hair. So currently, this should work perfectly fine. Hmm. Okay, and that should even work if you do. Uh, this should also work with, with uh, subclassing. So if we do more like a tag uh, panel and then tag 
tag uh, user panel inherits from panel. And then you could override just the body. Oh, that's cool. Uh, hello from user panel. But the thing that is very important here, and which is the reason we need to change this up, is that this only works for method calls. So the natural thing here, if you follow the IMBA methodology and just like clean code, the natural thing might be to just use the, the set it as a getter mm. and then just do body. And right. that's that's something that's not really, the compiler doesn't mention it as a warning or anything. But the thing is that uh, when it sees the method body here, IMBA, the compiler will actually, will actually create like a virtual context when it passes through that function call to memoize this DOM part that is part of the function call, mm. blah, blah, blah. And that would be too expensive to do in all, like you have all, always have all these like data, title, data, blah, 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 a lot of getters. And we don't want to do that whole expensive process in every property access in the render method. Mm. So that's the reason I only did it in method calls, but it's very easy to get tricked up with that. So yeah, so, so I, I I guess I yeah. tried with just regular method calls and, and ran into some problem, but it's been a while since I tried it. Yeah, could you even pass parameters to that that you then interpolate into yes. the HTML? Yes, you can. So if you do, uh, whoa, uh, title hello. Things like this will work, and even things like uh, CSS variables should work. Like, oh, cool. Okay, that's kind of a game changer. Uh, I gotta, I gotta give that a try. Yeah, and, and it would work if it's not a method but a function outside of the tag. Yeah, it should, but it's it's uh, again, it could be uh, there could be bugs. So it's very nice if you actually yeah. try it out more. Okay, I'm not sure I, I want to go too far down that path because it's it looks kind of like functional components in React. And I really don't right. want to go down that path where people start to use like functional components everywhere because uh, to be honest, I don't think functional components are as good as uh, as what you can have in Imba with these uh, class-like components because defining mm. the classes are just as short and just as elegant as functional components in React, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it should work. So please try it out. Um, okay, I will. But it, but one thing uh, now that we talk about that, that I think we should change for version two is that it might be nice to introduce some sort of syntax here to just tell the compiler that this is actually going to be uh, mm. something like this. Like this is yeah. actually expecting to be, to return a tag itself because right. then you could create the, the benefit of that is, that is that then you can use getters as well, getters because huh. We don't need to, then we can always assume that it will, there will be some memoized DOM elements inside of this, uh, this evaluation here. Uh, but also the other cool thing is that you could also add class names uh, and possibly even styles here and then apply those to the returned element. So you could also even do that with, uh, uh, properties as well. And just another thing, you can also use those multiple times. So this should work this here too. Right. So then you can use these as you talked about with the uh, arguments and stuff, you can use these as uh, body two, body one. You can use these as, as functional components. Cool. I'm but, definitely going to try that. I think that's yeah. a really nice way to break up some of the complex template yeah yeah and and also potentially passing things into into children to maybe account for some of the issues i was yeah complaining about with like styling and kind and of I, overriding children yeah and i like it for the for the whole concept of uh of overriding yeah subclassing the tags and then changing certain parts of the components while leaving other parts alone yeah but this is kind of a poor man's uh slot so I have yeah. also thought about a better way to override the content, the default content of slots in subclasses, but I haven't really landed on anything specific there either. So should we start thinking about wrapping up, Sindre? Uh, yeah, sure, we can. Uh, so nice. is, is there any more questions? Does anybody have a question that we haven't covered? We could do that the last five minutes. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, hey. Uh, yeah, that's a, that was a nice meeting. Uh, I came and uh, went away a little bit. But yeah, I've got a little question about um, uh, global, the global tag. So I made a pull request for uh, like kind of implementation of portals. Oh, uh, it was just like global tag, but uh, you know, I tested it uh, quite a bit and it's, uh, it's working as uh, expected. You just give it a two uh, prop and the two should be a selector, a query selector. It's just yeah. like in view uh, teleport actually, not a portal. So I named it uh like view yeah teleport and uh it seems working so maybe like we can uh that's cool and... i i actually haven't seen it i don't know why but i haven't uh, i look at it now so that's very cool yeah uh it was uh already like almost implemented so the yeah the only thing is that you know i made some decisions there i made sure like to to write about them in the in code review because you know, I just deprecated <laughs> the, the global tag <laughs> yeah. uh, in favor of this and they're going to work uh, the same way and the global tag is going to be working. I'm just telling them that uh, you know, it's going to be teleport from now on and if you don't give it a two uh, prop, it's going to default to the body. It's going to work just like the global tag right now. Do you think we should maybe still keep, still have the global tag just as a reference to global, or do you think it's not necessary at all? Yeah, we can keep it actually because you know this is in the you know spirit of Imba when you have you know some nice shortcuts. Yeah, and, and actually, I think like, it's not that big of duplication, so we can leave it. And I guess there are some special parts of global, and that's that when you define event handlers in global, it's kind of event handlers both for document and for windows. So certain event handlers only work on window. Uh, uh -huh. And I think the global teleport should take care of that. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, I, I get you. But I'm definitely going to look at it. I, I just hadn't seen it. It's very cool that you added this. I sent you a request to review it. So we yeah, can, we can discuss that. it next week if it's not already merged by then. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So cool. for the next meetings, Indre, does this time work for you? Yeah, hopefully. So my son fell asleep five minutes before the meeting this time, but usually he goes to bed earlier. Uh, you could so also I think... change it if it doesn't work on Tuesday. Yeah, but I think eight, eight, no, Tuesdays are fine. And eight is usually fine. So, so yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, let me see. No. Sorry, as to the, uh, one last thing I wanted yeah. to say about documentation. I think the best way to, because right now you are the only one who can do, you know, documentation, and that's that's not optimal. Like it's it's not something easy actually. Yeah. Yeah. If Imba so a screen by supports Imba, like uh, it's gonna be a lot easier. Like you can do something like code reviews with uh, Git speak. Or yeah. you know, documenting the source code for you know contributors to step in, and yeah. also to, to document you know features have nice example in uh, in Imba have a documentation that's really a screen uh, screencast that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I have uh, I have planned for that for a long time. Uh, to to be, be specific, I think I've planned for that for four years, <laughs> but I think uh, <laughs> and I'm. Uh, I'm uh, rewriting the screen as I talked about now in Imba 2. I should probably start doing some costs before that rewrite is done because that will take at least a few weeks, a few more weeks. Um, but yeah, I could, maybe we could do a poll or something in the chat and then try to at least, uh, at least one or two times this week, just sit down and, and do a random cast uh just talking about various parts that are not documented well enough now and i think probably uh you will get a lot out of it and maybe someone can pick them up and, and try to convert it into uh, documentation as well uh, yeah, i'm always down to convert much... into docs yeah. yeah i'd like to participate in that as well maybe write a part of the documentation yeah that would be really cool great I also liked your uh, your uh, idea for importing the styles Calvin, like import as global or import. So I'm gonna I'm gonna think about 
the uh, that as a solution to the CSS uh, stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Anything else for today? It's a, a little bit unrelated, but I'm just curious. I checked out Scrimba since I've never used it. And on the homepage, there is a button that's supposed to go to a test drive link. But when you click on that, it says that you need to be a subscriber to test that. Is that intended or? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, where is it? Is it down? Um, it says the word test drive. It's at the, the Scrimba way, step one. Oh. <laughs> No, that I should, uh, Frode, if you're listening in now, maybe you could fix that. Yeah, we'll fix. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for, for mentioning, Calvin. Sure. <laughs> we, d we don't want to require people to subscribe before the, to see how awesome the product is. That's uh, definitely not intended. But yeah. Cool. So we'll talk in a week. Hope to see most of you there. It's uh, nice to have so many people participating. See you all later. <laughs>